In early October, we discussed the use of Zilmax and other beta agonists in the cattle feeding industry. The conversation was relevant because large beef companies had recently decided to no longer accept cattle that had been fed Zilmax. That decision occurred after concerns were raised about animal lameness and death loss on the packing side. Merck Animal Health, the company producing Zilmax, suspended sales and said it would review the use of the feed additive. You'll remember now, in the opening of the show, I mentioned Oklahoma State University's Consumer Food Survey, which for the first time this month began tracking buyers' awareness and concern of Zilmax. While the issue did register, it's listed below most others. The matter of using this beta agonist also comes at a time when beef supplies are already tight, and losing the potential added weight benefit with this technology would only squeeze that further. UNL and other outside studies have tracked cattle on Zilmax and reviewed that data to determine if there's a link between the additive and lameness or death loss. Earlier this week, we discussed the findings and the use of Zilmax with Galen Erickson in the Animal Science Library on East Campus. This is a technology, a beta agonist that's a feed additive that's put in the feed for the last ending period of the cattle's uh, time in the feedlot and it increases growth, increases carcass weights by about 33 pounds and so it's, uh, it's a very useful technology to add weight. And, and the issue comes up then that recently um, people have been wondering does that technology have any negative impacts on, on lameness or death loss um, or susceptibility to stress and so that's been the big debate here the last couple months. In your UNL studies uh, this has been one of the things that you've tracked, you haven't necessarily recorded some of the data because it hasn't been uh, uh, big enough to note, correct? Yeah, in all of those studies that have been done, uh, uh, obviously we keep track of any death loss and any animal health related problems like lameness. Um, interestingly though, that many times we, we look at what's the performance and we don't report death loss or lameness or health problems simply because we don't see any difference between the treatments. And so you think, well, there's no reason to report it. Well, now there's a reason to report that. And so uh, going back and looking at 18 prior studies, not all UNL, only two of those at UNL, um, late stage death loss on cattle in controlled cohort studies, meaning uh, same population of cattle, half of them signed randomly to this control, half of them put on Zilmax, death loss was 0.24% in both populations. So. The data don't suggest that there's a, an increased death loss when you feed uh, this specific technology. Have you noticed a difference in lameness in any of those cattle? Well, lameness is, uh, in terms of observations on all those studies, there's not been a report of increased lameness at the feedlot sector. Um, and in a few of these studies, including one we've done at UNL, we actually put pedometers on the cattle and you can assess uh, hours standing, hours lying down in, in steps and uh, at least during those, during the time those cattle are in the feedlot phase, those last 20 days, there's not a difference in, in amount of time standing, lying or steps. Now Merck has funded some of these studies and uh, somebody might walk in and say, well, this data is funded by the company who's producing one of these products, Zilmax specifically, how can you take that for what it is? Yeah, that's a fair question and it's one I get a lot of, uh, but here's the way it works. In all of these trials, especially when they're done here at the University of Nebraska or with university involvement, uh, we, we require funding because we need to pay graduate students and, and those people that are working on collecting data. So we require funding, but uh, the company or the government, if it's funded by the government, are not here collecting that data. Uh, those data are collected by us. In fact, we don't see those people until after the trial is done and, and the data is fully collected. So I, I think the question of bias in that is really unfounded. Um, if we ever do a trial and, and we bias the data or the results, uh, I won't be at the University of Nebraska any longer because it's just not acceptable. So it's, it's really not a problem, in my opinion, of where the funding comes from. The big question is, is uh, who would fund it if they didn't because you know they put hundreds of millions of dollars into funding research on products that they produce and that's why it's well proven. Um, so my question would be is if, if you want to rely on data that are not funded by companies that have products, who will fund that work and it's fairly expensive research.
One of the things you mentioned yesterday was uh, the observations are at the packing industry. They're not necessarily in the feedlot sector. So something's happening somewhere in between. And if it's not Zilmax, then what is it? Yeah, and that's the thing I'm most interested in is that I'm not questioning that people have seen increased challenges, particularly let's focus on lameness. Um, and it's all those observations that I'm seeing and hearing are generally at the packing plant. And so are we handling cattle differently? Do we need to handle these cattle differently? Um, do we need to change how we're housing these cattle? how we're transporting them. So it raises a whole host of questions about improving animal husbandry. And I think that's a good thing that can come out of this is, is how do we do things differently then to solve this problem? In my opinion, based on the data, uh, just removing the use of a beta agonist will not solve this problem then. And uh, so I hope we have the same focus to continue to solve this problem as an industry. And I think that the, the other thing we have to do is figure out how big of a problem this is, and I think it's quite small. There are a lot of other things that can cause lameness issues, and we need to tackle all of those issues. For people that don't know exactly how much it helps the beef industry to use products like this, they might say, well, just don't feed it. Don't feed it at all. What would be the argument against that? Well, yeah, I think the, the easy thing to say is, well, uh, Merck has suspended sales, and, and, and we should say, well, let's just discontinue the use of it. I have some serious concerns there. Again, I think that producers have choices on what they use, and I think that's great in this country that we have choices to, to use these products or not. Uh, but now we don't have a choice if you take it away. Well, the benefits of using technology are pretty clear. Uh, it's been economical for the beef production system. But my biggest uh, concern if we don't use this technology is we will need to have more cows if we're going to produce the same amount of beef. Uh, or we'll produce less beef. And I'm already concerned on the amount of beef production that we have in the U.S. and not how do we decrease it, how do we increase it. And especially as population grows. And so there's environmental pluses by having more beef with less cows. There's some uh, efficiency gains that we have in the U.S. We're the most efficient beef producing system in the world. And then there's some real pluses then at the consumer level of, of the economics and, and being able to feed more people beef. So I think we want to be careful by limiting use of technology and going backwards, if you will, when I think, if anything, the next 20 to 50 years, we'll need to focus on how to use more technology.